Coaches have already addressed the media today. Here's what Coach Shiano had to say. I can honestly tell you, I've never been more excited to be the head coach at Rutgers University. And he's been the head coach at Rutgers University for a while, 15 years, right? If you count the the two different stints. No, that's accurate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I see, yeah, that's me. Yeah. And yeah. not a gray hair in his head. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> These are my yeah. Rutgers yeah. grays right here, Jerry. Don't give me that. <laughs> hey, Coach, offense has been a challenge here these last couple of years. You made a change there. Kirk Shiraka, someone you're very familiar with. Give us a sense of, of how that is going to move this offense forward. Yeah, I'm just grateful that he's back. You know, he's, uh, he's a guy I know very well, and it's a good thing because the job of a head coach has changed so much in the last even year and, and the way our time is used. Uh, Kirk is a senior guy, you know, a, a guy that can lead the room, great teacher, schematically knows what we want to do, and I'm, I'm thrilled to have him back. How do you get from where you are right now to where you want to be? Obviously, you believe that a new coordinator was part of that equation. What else do you need to do on that side of the ball to be the offense you want to be? Well, we you need to con continue to develop in the offseason, which we did physically. Uh, I think, you know, one of the things in Kirk's, the way Kirk runs the offense, it's cumulative repetitions over and over and over again. We're not going to we're not going to be doing a ton, but what we do, we better do well. So I think we're going to get better. And I think we have some good players that, you know, were young and now aren't so young. And that's the development part, where now they're starting to be Big Ten level players, and now they get to go out and do it. Where did Gavin show the most progress in the spring? Just understanding, seeing the pitcher, right? He's always had the big arm. He's always very athletic. But knowing where to go with the ball and where to go there quickly, I think that was the biggest development. Coach, you talked about from the podium that having veteran coaches allows you to do so many other things that you really didn't have to focus on in previous years. What are some of those things that you now have to focus on as a head coach? Well, when I came back, you know, I was committed to spending more time with the players and not as much time locked in the meeting rooms with the coaches. So I, I was living that already. But what occurred is a lot of that time now is used on NIL and raising money for NIL. And, you know, that stuff takes time. It doesn't happen overnight, at least doesn't at our place, and I have to work at it. So I'm really grateful to have not only Kirk Shiraka but Joe Harasimiak leading the defense. What are the positives about all the changes that, that have occurred in college football? What, what, what have you embraced the most? What, NIL seems to be a problem for a lot of people and the governance, but, but is there something that you like better about college football now maybe than when you got into it? Yeah, the thing I like is that players are getting compensated. I've said that for 20 years. I thought it was ridiculous that they weren't getting a bigger piece. I mean, you remember when you said you could have bagels, nuts, and berries, but you couldn't have the, the cream, cream cheese. Right, you couldn't have the cream cheese. cheese. What are we talking about, right? right. Now, now we're worried about how do we get the kid 100, 150, 200, right? The like, problem is the same people are running the operation. <laughs> so you, you said it, not me. All right, I got enough enemies. Don't be doing that to me, Jerry. Coach, people judge programs, wins and losses, right? How do you judge your program where they're moving to? Because I, from a coach's perspective or a player's perspective, it's not just about those wins and losses. How do you just gauge where you are and where you need to be as a program? Well, you have to be confident enough in your ability to, to see that, right? And, uh, sometimes coaches, they start to imagine we're better than we are. Like mm. I'm very realistic with where we are. Having a guy like Kirk sitting there who we both sit there and go, okay, this isn't gonna be good enough to win in the Big Ten. We gotta figure something out there. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter because the people that are judging you are the fans, yeah. right? Your boosters and those kind of things. And it still comes down to winning and losing. You know, and, and I've said that my whole career. Everything is great. All the, the icing on top is great. Our, you know, the academic achievements and the – but you better win games. Otherwise, you don't get to do it too long. But you still have to get your players involved. Even if there are, even if there are challenges that you may have on the field, which come in losses – you still have to be able to motivate those guys through that process. So I'm, I'm, I'm always interested in how coaches are able to keep the young people engaged in saying, hey, we're heading in the right direction. We're okay. We're doing it the right way. Well, I think it all comes down to who you recruit. Are those guys that fit your culture? Because our culture is about chop, and that's exactly what it is, right? You go out and you win a game, you got to show up the next day ready to chop. You go out and lose a game, you better show up ready the next day to chop. Certain young people aren't wired that way. Mm. So you better select the right guys. They better have it in them, and now you're just going to develop that. Mm. I know you've been chopping away a lot on that offensive line. It is an area where you've had some challenges. It looks like you have more experience there. How have you seen that group evolve here, and, and where is it right now in terms of where it needs to be to compete in the Big Ten, as you were saying? Yeah, it's the best we've been. 
But again, mm. that's not the measuring stick. The measuring stick are the people that we have to go out and play and, and win games against. So we're better. Uh, Pat Flaherty is on board with us as our O-line coach, who's you know a long-time NFL coach, and I, I heck, I GA'd for him back in the in the late '80s. So. Uh, I have a long history with them, but I'm really pleased with the way we're developing. And we had a great off season. I think the guys are physically more mature. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a key element, no doubt. Coach, you made a, you made a comment today. I know I, I know we don't want to talk about two years from now, but you know your schedule, the first year of the expansion, isn't any different than it is right now. And you're in the tough East. I mean, you don't yeah. play all. You play six of the seven Eastern teams. But but that's got to be a positive. I know it's not something that we think about now, but in a couple years, in that second year of that schedule, things get better for perhaps the people that have been have not been really competitive in the East. Yeah, I agree with you. I think when people asked me about the when it came out, I said, really, there's no difference in the first year. What's, what's the difference? I don't see any difference. But yes, as you look at it down the line, it begins to change. Again, I love this conference, and I, I you know I'm not one of those. Oh, let's play. I love whoever they schedule. We're going to play. But I love that Rutgers is in the Big Ten Conference. It's where we belong, and I've felt that for a number of years. So I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity. I remember you saying that before you went to the NFL. Yep. Uh, we were talking a little bit about the offense. The defense was a great story, certainly at the beginning of last year. You were really playing at an outstanding level. It faded a little bit down the stretch. But you got a ton of experience coming back defensively. How do you get it to a point where it is consistent, where you're playing late in the year the same way you were playing early in the year? I think we're on our way. I think what happened is you go through the year and they get worn down right and we weren't really performing well on offense so they're out there for a lot of plays yeah. and you know you get a few injuries and we we don't have the depth where our second is ready to go and jump in and there's no drop off now we're better now than we were a year ago so we've developed depth and I think that's going to be critical but I'm excited about the defense the whole defensive staff remained intact uh, they're back together. They have a special chemistry. It's a great group of coaches, and I think the, the chemistry they have with our players on that side of the ball uh, could be something big for us. Coach, you mentioned the schedule for a couple of years from now, but this year's schedule, I mean, the opener is fascinating to me because we know the turmoil the Northwestern has been experiencing. You play them, I think for years you kind of knew exactly what to expect with Northwestern because Pat Fitzgerald had a way of doing things. Now you have a new guy in charge in David Braun. How do you prepare for that uncertainty, maybe, of, of what you're going to face in the opener? You know, I don't think it's much different than what we were preparing for because, you know, Coach Bajakian, Bajakian runs the offense, and he's still there. And then they brought – when they made the change at defensive coordinator, they were going to run that defense. I was very convinced of that, all the intel that I had. Well, now that he's the head coach, I think they're even more so going to run right. that defense, right? <laughs> right? So it actually may have even cleared up some for us. Uh, with that, but who knows, right? The, the reality is, I got to make sure that our team's ready to play on the third. You know, we're going to line up, we're going to play split safety defense, we're going to play single high, we're going to run inside zone, and we're going to throw the ball down the field. <laughs> we got to be able well, to do that. Well, you just told them what you're yeah. going to do, yeah. right? It might be on tape. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guess what? That's what we're doing. How is that? Yeah. Might be on tape for the last 20 years. <laughs> Eliminated any of the mystery. What about the notion of playing on Sunday in that first game? There's very few games nationally. You're going to largely have that window to yourself, certainly in terms of major conference games. You'll have that window to yourself. What does that mean for Rutgers having that game on campus? All of the stuff that comes with it. Yeah, you know the way coaches think, right? You love the fact that you're the only show on town, noon on Sunday, and then fast forward, you have a six-day work week to get ready for next week. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, great on Sunday, not so great on Wednesday. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Uh, Greg Schiano, head coach of the Scarlet Knights. Always a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you when we head out to Piscataway, Coach. Yeah. Thank you, fellas. Yeah.